say hello monday july 25th the last monday of july i think hmm, let me check we are going to wait uh, a little bit for others to happen yes the last monday of july hmm. hi guys i hope everybody's doing well i hope everybody has started the week in an amazing way uh it's been a very long day on my end so don't mind the face <laughs> uh it's a long day but we are very thankful so it's all good um well today because of um conversation every so often about dementia and memory issues and brain health and such i figure i will do a little bit on brain health also right um you'll find it all boils down to the same thing ultimately however if you are one that's uh, concerned about memory about brain health especially if you are retired and things like that then these little tips might be helpful to you um there is one thing i would like to mention though they um you know we hear a lot about dementia there are all sorts of conditions that will participate to memory cognition that type of thing um but one you hear often is dementia and dementia is on the rise it's really on the rise especially in um, developed countries, U.S. being one of them. So one thing I would like to mention is typically when you hear dementia, folks immediately think of Alzheimer. Well, there are a whole lot, there are all kind of dementia there. There are all kind of different um, conditions out there. But I'm going to put the difference between the two most common or the well yeah the t since well th let me say the two most common if i can put it that way right i'm gonna try to tell you a little bit actually just put a difference between Alzheimer's dementia and um vascular dementia and the reason why i'm bringing that up is because vascular dementia really you can really really work toward minimizing you know the the occurrence of vascular dementia so um one big way to differentiate between Alzheimer's and vascular is really in the initial stages vascular will manifest with um slow speed of thinking and issues with problem solving okay if um a certain task requires you to kind of come up with a way or require you to solve a challenge that is keeping you from completing the task and that's something you will have done easily before and you find yourself struggling to accomplish that you know that's what problem solving is and um speed of thinking which i act like i might, I might be <laughs> but it is fatigue okay <laughs> um so those are the two um the reason why i wanted to mention about vascular oh and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. um one big thing with Alzheimer's is memory loss okay it starts very mildly little forgetfulness here and there and then it, it, it progresses and really the consensus common consensus out there is that most of the time both of them just over overlap each other in an individual unless an individual with Alzheimer's, uh, I mentioned about a gentleman I took care of a couple of weeks ago that was quite healthy, very healthy. That guy probably has a lower um, possibility of having vascular dementia and just really having more of the Alzheimer's. Um, but those two tend to overlap. So, 
um, the reason why I mentioned that again is because of the things you can do to really help with your brain health okay um, just because you are just because you are a little forgetful or what not doesn't mean that you have dementia let me put that out there you'll find how much exhaustion fatigue lack of sleep anxiety depression affect your mind your thinking process you know or your thinking speed your problem solving simple case in point when you have a lot on your mind when you have a lot on your mind you typically will find yourself turning in circle you know you want to accomplish something but something else grabs your attention and something else grabs your and then you are not getting things done so be mindful of that okay it doesn't necessarily mean uh you have dementia and you really should not i mean you know don't speak that over yourself <laughs> but you want to be careful you want to be mindful you want to be watchful and possibly try to help your body the best you can you know to minimize um the risk of the occurrence so vascular dementia if it doesn't give you a, a tip already you know results from vascular disease so think about it if you have coronary artery disease or high blood pressure or high cholesterol or diabetes you know some of the conditions that participate to vascular disease or peripheral arterial disease peripheral uh, um, venous disease so the peripheral vascular disease if you have issues that are already dealing with your bigger vessels blood vessels think about what's happening with the smaller blood vessels in your brain the harm that is happening in the vessels of your heart the harm that is happening in the vessels of your kidneys the harm that is happening in the vessels of your your hands neuropathy things like that think about what's happening in those very tiny little vessels of the brain not to mention the big vessels that supply you know the big vessel then it branches off in this those very little little nets um think about what's happening there so that's why i'm talking about vascular dementia um because a change in lifestyle uh, 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 uh the things you eat um control of the conditions the conditions you are dealing with participates toward um, a better health of your brain also okay and this is somewhere for me to mention about diabetes for example and blood sugar control so I've encountered diabetes that are so afraid because we talk about high blood sugar high blood sugar high blood sugar i've encountered diabe diabetics that are so afraid of high blood sugar that they rather deal with low blood sugar anytime any day and get themselves in low blood sugar every so often that's a very dangerous game to play the high is not good the low is not better the low is even believed to be more dangerous than the high for the brain okay this is because when you are low and you are severely depriving your brain of nutrients you are pretty much kind of frying your cells very quickly so that's something to kind of avoid when you you know it may happen once in a while but that's, that's not something you want to be encountering constantly or very frequently it's not good for your brain cells okay we know about high blood pressure and how it can cause stroke as a matter of fact individuals that have, have that have had stroke tend to um be among those that you know develop some type, some form of dementia so that's another thing um blood sugar high blood pressure cholesterol your artery getting clogged your blood vessel getting clogged if it's happening in the heart Think about what's happening in the brain okay so that's that now you may say well rachel what 
you know, what can I do? Like, how do I? I've talked about how sleep affects. Because remember, when we sleep, we are regenerating. Regenerating. We are allowing our body to heal. We are allowing ourselves to regenerate. So, sleep is an important factor. You want to have decent amount of sleep. Chronic insomnia is detrimental. The things you eat, and I'll get back to that, but the things you eat. If you have high blood pressure, then you want it to be controlled. If you have high cholesterol, you want it to be controlled. Um, the chronic conditions, like I say, that deal with uh, that go along vascular disease that go with uh, the health of your blood vessels of your heart. Those conditions affecting you, you want to um, control them. You know. The more control it is, the less is harming your brain, among other things. Now, there is also a form of diet out there that they call the mind diet. That's basically a way to eat that participates toward brain health because it provides the nutrients and minimizes the harmful you know, substance to the brain health. The mind diet stands for Mediterranean dash intervention for neurodegenerative delay. So it's a uh, diet kind of designed to prevent dementia and loss of brain function. And again, these are things that typically happen as you age, unless you have some issues. So I'm not talking about those that have had uh, some kind of traumatic brain injury, again, uh, stroke or that have had um, seizure, that have seizure, uncontrolled seizures, those type of things. That's not what I'm talking about. But would this help? Why not? If you are giving appropriate, you know, at least in um, preventing the, the issue already there from worsening by you doing the right thing. So, this is a Mediterranean and the DASH diet. Now, Mediterranean diet, you know they talk a lot about how good it is for the heart to a certain sense but there is there is a uh, some controversial con some um uh, uh controversies around it there is some controversies around it i'm telling you being fatigued doesn't help controversies around it and the dash diet uh, we know is for heart health um now, a traditional Mediterranean diet consists of grains, legumes, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and fish. So, uh, and the dash, in the other hand, is fruit, vegetable, and low-fat dairy products. So, the goal, again, of the MAN diet is to reduce the occurrence of dementia and the loss of brain function. Now, Let's start with what you want to avoid when you are really being mindful of your brain health. What do you want to avoid? You want to avoid processed food, right? You want to avoid processed food, period. You want to avoid um, too much saturated fat. You want to avoid um, uh, smoking. You want to minimize red meat. So with smoking, again, we are telling people all the time to quit smoking because of the harm done to the to the heart, the lungs, really your blood vessels overall. That's that. Uh, red meat. Why should you limit red meat? That's a top four another day. But when it comes to the the bad fats, that's one thing. When it comes to um, participating to inflammation, that's one thing. Same thing for dairy products. I've already talked about um, dairy products participating to inflammation. And in parentheses, red meat is um, 
also controversies as far as participating to inflammation, but a high intake of red meat in a lifetime has been linked to a lot of issues. So now I talked about processed food and um, like candy, pastries, things of the sort that are made out of processed stuff, processed flour, the sugar, the oil, all of those things. So you, you really want to minimize, try to minimize those things, okay? Sleep, exercising, those are very, very um, important things too. Especially, not only physical exercise, but also exercise for the brain. So doing things that stimulate your brain. Um, the puzzles, reading, um, you know, there are even exercises out there, physical exercises that call on coordination. Those are things that challenge your brain. So you want to, you know, uh, invest in that. You want to really try um, to incorporate that in your lifestyle. And ultimately you realize that um, the food I'm going to mention are already food that are again encouraged when you are trying to control your diabetes, when you are trying to control high blood pressure, you know, when you are trying to minimize cholesterol and that type of thing. So number one, and I will have to do a number two and finish afterwards because our time is up. Number one, for being green leafy vegetable, you want to aim for six or more servings a week. So really try to have one serving every day. You get your six in green leafy vegetables. So that's kale, spinach, cooked greens, um, and salads. Um, all other vegetables you can also eat at least once a day. And you want to try to choose the non starchy one if possible or lower amount of the non starchy one only because um i mean you want to you want to eat more of the non starchy one and lower the amount of the starchy one only because the non starchy one tend to be higher in nutrients and have low number of calories so if you are being mindful um of your weight now and and sugar blood sugar now if you do go for starchy vegetables Try to stay away from the white starch or minimize the white starch. So go for the whole, the whole grain, the brown rice, things of this sort. Okay, so that's two food you can incorporate in your eating if you are not already. And uh, more reason for you to incorporate those if you are not quite sure why. Because it also helps with your brain health you know um considering how much um dementia and brain loss of brain function conditions are on the rise okay so i'm going to stop here guys and um if you have any question comments please don't hesitate to leave it for me i'll follow and you'll get your answers i'm going to wish you all a wonderful wonderful rest of the week Get out there, get your exercise in, get your hydration in, and try to get as much sleep as you can or normal amount of sleep, okay? And, and stay, stay encouraged, stay encouraged. All right, bye everyone, take care.